In the last video, we learned the five different basic operators in propositional logic. We learned about not, we learned and, or, if then, and then if and only if. And then I gave you four sentences to translate on your own for practice. So we're going to go over the solutions here. But as always, I only do these on the exercise videos. If the videos have helped and you have the financial means to support more videos and education on YouTube, you can join the member or you can join the channel as a member below for only $2 or $5 Canadian a month. And that would greatly help me out in continuing to make these videos. So let's go over these solutions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to underline the parts that are propositions and I'm going to uh, put little squares over the operators and we're going to translate that. So Michael Scott is the best character on the office. Well, is that true or not? That's up to you, but that is a proposition in itself. And I'm going to call this M for Michael Scott. Uh, he is not on the show anymore. Okay, so here's a proposition, but we have a not in here. So the not is going to be an operator. And I'm going to pick uh, he is on the show as S. So he is on the show still could be S. We also have another operator here. This one in green, even though. And this has the same meaning as and. So Michael Scott is the best character on the show, and he is not on the show anymore. It's got the same truth to it, uh, even though it has sort of this contrast meaning to it, but we can't translate contrast into logic. So we treat this as and. So how do we translate this overall? Well, our connectives are nice and in order, so we can just translate this as M and not S. So Michael Scott is the best character on the office, and Michael Scott is not on the show anymore. Okay, what about two? Fido is neither a dog nor a cat, but rather a goose. Okay, so we don't have complete sentences here, but we have some propositions that we can extract. So uh, Fido is a dog. This could be F. Uh, Fido is a cat. This could be C, uh, but rather a goose. So uh, Fido is a goose. We could write this as G. Okay, so we have three propositions here. Now let's figure out what we do about these words, uh, neither and nor. Well, we looked at this example in the last video. So what we can do is uh, we could translate this first bit as not F or C. So it is not the case that Fido is a dog or Fido is a cat. Uh, we could also trans this, translate this as Fido is not a dog and Fido is not a cat. So either one of these ways, we can translate that first bit. You have two options there. The next bit, but rather a goose. So but is another contrast word, but it has the same meaning as and. So uh, but rather a goose would be and g. So we have two different ways of translating the sentence. We could do not f or c and g, or we could do not f and not c and not c and g. So you could read this as, it is not the case that Fido is a dog or a cat, and Fido is a goose. Or you could read it as, Fido is not a cat, and Fido is not a dog, and Fido is a goose. And both of those have the same meaning as what we just translated. So the more challenging part here is, of course, this neither nor, because there's two different ways to translate that. Okay, let's look at question three. If a tailor sews a shirt, then she will make money. And if a tailor sews a dress, she will not be poor. Okay, let's take a look at our propositions. Uh, a tailor sews a shirt. Let's call this S for shirt. Uh, she will make money. Let's call this M for money. A tailor sews a dress. Let's call that D for dress. Uh, she will not be poor. So the she will be poor, I want to call this P for poor. But then we have this not here. So that's going to be a negation. Now, we have some ifs and thens. So if then. So if a tailor sews a shirt, okay, so because tailor sews a shirt comes after if, we know this is going to be what's called our antecedent. And that mean, and then everything after then is going to be a consequent. So if tailor sews a shirt, then she will make money. So we can translate this first half as if S, then M. Now we have on the right side another if then, but the then is hidden. So everything after if, this is our antecedent, which means this is the condition, and then she will not be poor. This is our consequent. So if the condition is met, this is our result. So the right side we can translate as if D, then not P. Now all of these things are conjoined by this and in the middle. 
So if the condition, if, or if the proposition on the left, and if blah, 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 the proposition on the right. So we can conjoin these two conditionals with an and, so our final result is s arrow m and d arrow not p. So if a tailor sews a shirt, then she will make money, and if a tailor sews a dress, then she will not be poor. Okay, finally, this last one has multiple sentences in it. This is the form of an argument. So typically when we have an argument, we might number them and we list them uh, vertically here. So I have how many sentences? One, two, three. I have four sentences here, and the last one is a therefore. So sometimes we put a line between all of these to show that the first three are premises, the last one is an argument. So Spike ate the food on the floor. I'm going to call this one S for Spike. So it might not really be a nice way to do this. I'm going to use straight lines. So that way this looks nicer. I'm going to call this one S. So the first sentence we can just translate as S. Spike ate the food on the floor. The second one, I have Mary put the food in the bowl. Okay, I'm going to call this one M for Mary. So the second sentence is just M for Mary. This is going pretty well so far. Okay, next one. Charlie scolds Spike if Spike ate the food on the floor and Mary put the food in the bowl. Okay, so we have some propositions here. Uh, Charlie scolds Spike. This one is new. We haven't seen this one before. Let's call this C. Uh, we have, what do we have here? We have Spike ate the food on the floor. Well, we've seen that one before. And Mary put the food in the bowl. We've also seen that one before. So uh, Spike ate the food. That's going to be S. Mary put the food in the bowl. That's M. So what of our operators? Well, we have and here. So there's our and. We have an if. So that's going to give us an if then. Okay, so Charlie scolds Spike if Spike ate the food on the floor and Mary put the food in the bowl. So our antecedent is pretty much everything after if. So our antecedent here is S and M. That means in our translation, S and M are going to come first. Then we're going to have the arrow and our consequent will be after. So the then here is really this component. Uh, Charlie scolds Spike. So if we want to paraphrase this, we could say, if Spike ate the food on the floor and Mary put the food in the bowl, then Charlie scolds Spike. So we have C at the end. So if S and M, then C. Now our final sentence, therefore, therefore doesn't have any meaning in translation. This is just signals that we're at the end of our argument here. So we don't have to worry about this. But we have, Charlie scold Spike. Okay, so that's going to be C for Charlie. However, Mary put the food in the bowl. So that's going to be our M. So what do we do with however? What is this? You got a nice voice crack there, but that's not important. What's important is how do we deal with however? Well, however is a lot like and. However has a contrast, but it still means that both of these facts are true. So we can just translate this as M. So our final sentence is going to be C and M. So Charlie scold Spike and Mary put the food in the bowl. So this entire paragraph translates into four sentences. Uh, S, M, if S and M, then C, therefore we have C and M. So this makes sense, right? If we think about this logically, uh, we're saying S is true and M is true. So these are both true. Then we're saying if S and M are both true, then C is going to be true. Okay, so all three of these things are true. Therefore, we can conclude that C is true. And because we already know M is true from line two or sentence two, we know M is true as well. So that's all I have for this video. We've just translated four sentences. Well, we've translated three sentences and then a paragraph that has four sentences. But if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to you when I can.